more uh, modestly that I can answer many of the questions that you ask. But it is a very old, uh, all I can say, it's very old, this uh, power of taking, of villagers taking wood from forests. And there are many old documents that we could find. And I think it's a good idea to to start thinking about how we're going to warm ourselves and what we're doing with the wood. I'm not here to, I can't tell you. Likewise, with the slow marching on the land and dealing with the high court, I don't think it would be out of place at all to remind the high court of chapter 14 of the Charter of the Forest on chiminage which is uh, for people to walk on the chemin, you know, on the road. This goes back to, to what, 1217. Don't, we cannot uh, overestimate our, the um, knowledge and intelligence of uh, lawyers. They will do what w we make them to do. I don't need to explain people who are experienced in direct action to know this or who have studied the history of English law. I'd like to mention, you mentioned The Making of the English Working Class by Edward Thompson. I'd like to remind everybody to look at his book, The Wigs and Hunters, which is a very close study of Windsor Forest, for instance. And here is one of the finest historians of the 20th century, you know, writing about a forest and its rights. This is our knowledge. This is your knowledge, but we must take it. And yeah, so I wanted to, to say that, you know, chiminage. Let's, let's walk for, with chiminage behind us that, you know, if we want. The chart of the forest is very short. There's no, you don't rely on me. You know, I say three principles, assembly, commons, and reparations, but read it yourself, it's short. You know, it's right there on the internet. And people have used it for many, many centuries. Professor Andy Woods, you know, up at, in Durham, he is a historian of that. And some years ago, there was a, a show by Patrillo, is that his name? Uh, things I forgot to remember. That's on the internet too. It's about the charter of the forest. Andy Wood is very powerful in speaking there. He's one of the finest scholars in this. He is the finest scholar in the British Isles on the history of oppressed working class people's struggle for wood in, the, in, the, in your forests. And the great struggles for freedom in the British Isles, you know, from the Peasants' Revolt through Ketz Rebellion, you know, on up through Chartist times, on up through the road protests of our own times, have relied on this knowledge. And it's, yeah. So at this point, I must take off my shirt. <laughs> I am just so hot. And the, do you need a microphone? Know, now is the time. <laughs> <laughs> We'll just um, let this gentleman speak about the um, Sounding Rock no. issue. No, 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 sorry? Oh, sorry. I've seen some of you this morning. I'm here from California. Thank you. you know, this is a wonderful mm -hmm. gathering. Just to answer the, I forget, I don't sure. see the. Uh, no, before you, the. Uh, Yes, in the green, in the in in the Nottinghamshire green. Can I say that? The wood folk, the wood, the wood, the woody hoodies. So um, I work in the Earth Sciences Building um, in the Bay Area, and uh, the people on the hillside that I live in, where the Ohlone, who lived off the bay, and it's, it's a desert now. It's it's still a beautiful place. Do come. I mean, been to California, of course. There's a big struggle among among some of the. The, the coastal Miwok, about whether to fight 
against the placing of the nuclear waste long term. Uh, this is in Ward Valley. There's a number of places they want to put the nuclear waste. Yucca Mountain, some of you might know, these are the sort of native spaces. We're the only nation state that has bombed its own, we bomb ourselves. The Brits did it, of course, in the Pacific and Woomera. It's a catastrophe. Um, there are still some old Anzac troops who were put in harm's way who were suing the British state for chromosomal damage uh, back in 57 when the British state was cranking up its civilian and its military uh, atomic operations uh, at Calder Hall, Windscale, now Sellafield. Um, that, they will not want to admit that. So there's the risk question. Now, uh, the, the thought I bring to you from California is that the tribe, what we, the white people call the tribe, is split. Often it's a kind of generational thing. Some of the young, some of the elders are taken in, uh, believe what some of the youngsters who've gone to college say, we can fight them on scientific grounds. In other words, let's, let's get the, our best risk scientists and say, the plume of poisons are heading towards our aquifer. And I know we have artesian water pressure here and that could be a case a legal case some of them say no actually i've been talking to some of our comrades in australia who say if we put our sand maps i'm talking about the indigenous against the white man's gps stuff we're going to lose that and so let's just play the sacred land in other words all these rights this is like a clever negotiation, right? I mean, this is, it's a, it's a, it, as Peter says, it's a class struggle. I don't know the answer to this. There are very good reasons to do both. Let's get our best risk scientists and do their best. Some of you are old enough, I know, the gray hairs among us, to have heard his voice coming out of radio, before it was called Radio 4, the, what was it called, the Home Service? Anyway, in the mid-70s, at the Windscale Inquiry. Who here remembers the Windscale Inquiry? So Brian was a young Cumbrian uh, who, who was a risk scientist. He got and, one right. Sorry, I lived in Zimbabwe, where when you have important questions, you have an indaba. It starts, and then you go as long as it takes. I appreciate we have many voices to hear. But this is a message, I'll put it in a nutshell. Yes do the best you can with risk science, you're probably going to lose the fracking argument on that. Best to play also another way, which would be the way from, you know, the question directly, like, how do they do it in North America? Well, it's like, this is our land. We belong to that, right? That's thought to be non-modern. But our commoning language is not reviving it because it exists still in a very attenuated form in Laxton, which we went to yesterday. So again, I'm speaking with a certain passion because we're in the struggle in California and I bring you this news that the indigenous peoples are split and it's not either or, but where are you <coughs> going to put your energies? We only have, they have taken most of our resources, right? We're, we're dispossessed. But we are many and they are few. Thank you. And I am sorry if I have to cut people off to give everyone we can a voice. And uh, thank you again to Peter. And now we've got Guy standing who's going to introduce himself.